worship the Lord tonight. Brother Coy, if you'll go ahead and get ready to sing. The Bible tells us in Psalms chapter 150, starting at verse 1, Praise ye the Lord. Does anybody here tonight have a praise? Do we have a praise? Do we have a song of worship? Do we have an attitude of thanksgiving? Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and the harp. Praise him with the timbrel and the dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Uh, praise him upon the loud cymbals. Uh, praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Uh, let everything that hath breath uh, praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Can you right now give the Lord your best praise? As I journey through the land, singing as I go. Pointing souls of Calvary to the crimson flow. Many arrows pierce my soul from without within. But my Lord leads me on, through Him I must win. Oh, I want to see Him look upon His face. There to sing forever of His saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. When in service for my Lord, dark may be the night, but I'll cling more close to Him, He will give me light. Satan's snares may vex my soul, turn my thoughts aside, but my Lord goes ahead, leads whate'er be tied. Oh, I want to see Him look upon His face, there to sing forever of His saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. When in valleys low I look toward the mountain high, Savior there leading in the fight with a tender hand outstretched toward the valley low guiding me I can see as I onward go oh I want to see him look upon his face there to sing forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory let me lift my voice Cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. When before me billows rise from the mighty deep, then my Lord directs my bark, He does safely keep. And He leads me gently on through this world below. He's a real friend to me, oh, I love Him so. upon his face there to sing forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory let me lift my voice cares all past home at last ever to rejoice oh I want to see him look upon his face there to sing forever of his saving grace on the streets of I do believe, folks, when I see him, that I'm going to thank him for that old rugged cross. Let's sing it. Let's worship him this evening. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. Yes, 
yes I do we're the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain so I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last Despised by the world as a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God left his glory above to. In the old rugged cross stained with blood so divine a wondrous beauty I see for it was on that old cross Jesus suffered and died It's shame and reproach gladly bear. I like this part. Then he'll call me someday to my home far away where his glory forever I'll share.
Father, we thank you. We love you, and we thank you for all you do for us. We thank you for your word that you've given us, Lord, that guides us through our life, Father. We thank you for allowing us to communicate with you through prayer. Lord, we just, we just praise your holy name. I praise you, Jesus, for everything that you do for us, for everything that you go ahead of us for for the things that you've prepared for us before we ever even knew it Lord we love you and we praise you and help us tonight as we study your word that we would realize exactly who you are and what you want to do for us and we'll be careful to give you honor, glory and praise in Jesus name Amen Thank y'all. Wow, what a praise time. Isaiah 43, verse number 18. I'm thankful for that verse. It says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. The past is the past. God's got a future for each and every one of us, and it's so easy for me to look back in, in time, and it's so easy for me to see the things that I've failed at, and it's so easy for the devil to kick me in the teeth with those things and say, you're not ever going to make anything. You're not going to reach people. You're not ever going to be what you claim to be. You're not ever going to make it. Well, let me tell you, that's a lie from the pits of hell. Because Jesus Christ wants to change your life. He wants to do something different in your life. And he don't care what happened yesterday. But he wants me to get on my knees and say, Lord, I'm sorry and I need you every day. He wants me on my knees and he wants me to say, Lord, I'm going to do better tomorrow than I did today. And guess what? He's going to come along beside me. And when he comes along beside me, he's going to pick me up where I stumble. He's going to say, look here, brother. Look here, son. I'm, I'm going to help you here. If you'll let me, if you'll surrender your life to me, if you will say, Lord, I need you. And I do. And I do. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ooh. Boy, he hit me with this scripture today. I'd been studying it and I knew it was what I was supposed to preach on and he hit me with that. And I'm telling you what, wow. How many times have we read that and how many times have we looked at that? He's not interested in all my failures. He's not interested in all the stuff that I failed at and what I did wrong and the things I didn't do that I should have done. He's not interested in none of that, but he's interested in me doing better tomorrow. And through him, I can do it. By myself, I can't. Verse number 19 says this. Behold, I will do a new thing. How many knows we need a new thing in our life every once in a while? Number one, I get bored with the old stuff. But I want it to be something good. I want that new thing to come from God. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. I, I saw a deer this morning, Brother Johnny. And that deer sprung forth. Let me tell you. He, she was standing way over here and when she sprung forth, she hit the ground way over here. Now some of y'all that's seen that happen know exactly what I'm talking about. And God showed me, he said, that's what I want to do in your life. That's where I want you to be. You're right here right now. And I want you to spring forth. I want you to hit the ground over there running. I want to do a new thing in your life. And I want you to spring forth to it. And I'll help you do that. Shall you not know it? It says, I will even make a way. Woo. 
Y'all tell that me and the good Lord's had a pretty good day. It says, and I will even make a way. I don't know how he's going to do it. I don't know how he's going to do it in this group of people. I don't know how he's going to do it in this church. But I believe what the Word of God says. I will even make a way in the wilderness. Anybody ever been lost in the woods? I, I, I'm going to tell you a quick story, and I'm going to tell it on my dad. There was a little piece of property behind our house, uh, seven, 77 acres behind our house, and we got back there one night coon hunting, and Dad got turned around. And we walked, and we walked, and we walked, and we walked, and we walked. And finally he said, we got to go this way. I said, Dad, I really think we need to turn and walk that way. No, he said. I said, Dad, I've been walking with you. I said, you know, I, I'm not going to disrespect you at all. But I said, me and you've been walking for about two and a half hours. I said, uh, would you just try this for 30 minutes? He said, well, I guess so, but we're going opposite what we need to walk. And we walked out, and we walked out into an open field, which was actually his own property. And we was looking at the back of his own house. And he said, we got to go this other way. I don't know who lives here. And I, and I tell you that story because we can get so turned around, we can get things so mixed up, we can get so backwards that we don't even know where we're at. And we don't even know which way to go. But he says in this scripture, I will make a way, will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers and in the desert. And I look around and I think about the desert <laughs> Some of y'all probably never been lost in the wide open spaces, have you? I have. When I first moved to the panhandle of Oklahoma, I thought, how in the world could you ever get lost here because you can see for 15 miles? Well, let me tell you, I've got more turned around there than I ever did in the woods even in the desert. And verse number 20 says this. The beast of the field shall honor me, the dragons and the owls, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. My chosen. I'm one of them people. Folks, we're his, woo. He's going to make a way for us. He's even going to make it to where we're going to be comfortable. It's, he's going to put rivers in the desert. He's got everything lined up is what that tells me for me to spring forth and do that new thing that he wants to do in my life. I don't know what it is, but I know there's people in this room right now that would love to do a new thing, that would love for Christ to do something big in their life. But we're a little bit afraid of it. And, and the reason we're a little bit afraid of it is we don't know how it's going to look. We don't know exactly what it's going to look like, Pastor. And you know what? I believe God told me today he's not going to tell me what it's going to look like because if I follow him the way he wants me to follow him and I start springing forth like he's asking me to spring forth and you do the same, I think if he told us what the outcome would be, it would scare us to death. I don't know about you, Pastor, but when he called me to preach, if he'd have told me I'd stand in front of people and, and speak, I'd have, said, I'd have said, Lord, you got the wrong guy. 
And I believe that's the reason. But he wants to do that new thing. Why does he want to do that new new thing in our life and, and want us, wants us to spring forth is because he wants us reaching people for the kingdom of God. I'm just going to tell you this. I, I, I look around and not our church, don't get me wrong, but I look around at people who are going to church and they go in there and they sit down and they don't, they hear the preacher, but they don't hear the preacher. Y'all with me? They hear the Word of God, but they don't hear the Word of God. They're going through the motion. And they're not reaching people for the kingdom. They don't have the love of Jesus Christ in their heart. And I'm not bashing any other church or anything else. But when we, God forbid, we get to that point. We're nothing more than a country club when we get to that point. God wants to do something in this group of people. He wants us to spring forth. He wants us to look like that deer. Wow. And he says right here that he'll give us water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, so that we'll be able to sustain ourselves and do the things that we need to do. And verse number 21 says this. This people have I formed for myself. They shall shew forth my praise. Hmm. Some of y'all didn't hear that. Because I've got chill bumps running all down the backs of my leg. This people... Have I formed for myself? Jesus, the Lord has formed us for him. He wants us to spring forth. He wants us to be that people that praises him and not only praises him, but he wants us to be that people that shows other people his love and his mercy. He wants us to to make those leaps and bounds because he's formed us for himself. I wonder sometimes, I, I, I get to thinking about things of the Bible and it says not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Whoo! If everybody that called theirself a Christian would obey that one scripture, we couldn't hold them, Pastor. If everybody that called themselves Christians would obey that one, we'd turn this world upside down. Because he's formed us for himself. But he wants us to show others what he's done for us. And when I look around at my life, sometimes I get all upset and all uptight about the things that are going on in the world and really it's not going to make a bit of difference a hundred years from now. Y'all with me? I get all uptight about things at work. I get all uptight about way people drive I get all uptight at having to go to town and there's so much traffic and all the people that are what difference does it make I'm going to tell you what difference it makes the difference it makes is who I reach for the kingdom of God and I'm probably not going to reach that person if I'm giving them the eye y'all thought I was going to say something else but I don't do that if I'm giving them the eye going down the road, you know, the mean mug, because I didn't like the way they drove. Or, or, or if someone sees me get angry over some little piddly something. Now, surely, I, I hope I'm the only one that does that. 
But we've got to show the love of Jesus Christ in, the, in our actions. What we do, how we do it, when we do it, and all these things. He formed us for himself. I, boy, Pastor, can I tell you something? I could not hardly contain myself out back a while ago when he said, we're going to do something a little different tonight. I said, thank you, Lord. You know why? Behold, I will do a new thing. And it shall spring forth. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'll do a new thing and it's not going to stand still, but it's going to jump. It's going to spring forth. It's going to make a difference in this community. It's going to make a difference in lives. One, two, a thousand, five thousand. God wants to use us. That's, whew, that's what he's trying to tell us. He wants to use us for his kingdom. He wants, number one, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're missing out. He wants you in his family because he formed you for himself. He formed you to praise and worship him. He wants you in the family of God. It's not his will that anyone would miss heaven, but that everyone would receive it. He wants you. If you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, who have you led to the Lord? If you, if you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, not only... Who have you led to the Lord? But what kind of plan do you have to do that? Oh, it's so easy for me. Let me can I just be real with you? It's, it's so easy for me to leave church and go home. And I even study my Bible. And get up and go to work. And go by a person after person after person after person. Y'all are getting y'all are getting it, aren't you? And never have the thought of where they're going to spend eternity. Where is this person going if something happens? Oh, yeah, every once in a while I'll go by a wreck or something like that, and I'll think, ooh, if something happened to them, I sure hope they knew Jesus. Wow. And I get to worrying about, am I doing all I need to? Well, I know I'm not. Are you? I think that's something that we need to be thinking about on a day-to-day -day basis is am I doing what God's called me to do? Am I where I need to be? Did I really need to miss Wednesday night? I look at the camera at that because everybody here is here on Wednesday night. Did I really need to miss last Sunday? Was it really a big deal? But not only that, have, have I done what I need to on Monday morning? Well, it says not to look to the things of the past. So my question is, what are we going to do on Thursday morning? And Friday? 
and Saturday. Because God wants to do a new thing in this group of people. <laughs> Woo, he wants us to spring forth. But you know why I think he is going to make that way? Because there's people out there dying and going to hell. And that's not where he wants. He's willing to make that way for us. He's willing to put a river in the desert for us. We just need to be doing kingdom work. Tonight, if, if you would bow your head and close your eyes just a minute. I don't think that God excited me the way he did for no reason. I, I want to tell you this. He don't want you looking back, but he wants you looking ahead. That's what his word said. And not only does he not want you looking back, he wants you looking ahead. But he wants to be your Lord and Savior if he's not. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, I'm gonna ask you to I'm gonna ask you to just get up out of your seat right now. Everybody's got their eyes closed. If that's you, come to the front. The other thing I'm gonna ask you is this. If you've been convicted that you haven't sprang forth that you're not willing to step out that you're not willing to be that person that is going to jump ahead and, and allow God to do that new thing in your life and you know that you need to get some things right I'm going to ask you to come to the front and pray about that The last thing I'm going to ask you is this. If you've got people on your heart that you know needs Jesus Christ in their life, I'm going to ask you to come forward and pray for them as we finish this service.